we are progressing quite fine in terms of the schedule and um, we are supposed uh, to continue the consideration of the agenda item five other matters uh, so uh, i uh, was told that we uh, had actually the uh, unsuccessful attempts uh, from the delegation of Iran to get connected. And I would like to ask the Secretary if we have this opportunity now to provide a chance to the delegation of Iran, taking into account the limits uh, and the difficulties we all experience uh, with the uh, modern means of the communications and if uh, there is a possibility to get the delegation of Iran through with your indulgence i uh, will be ready to offer the floor for the iranian delegation uh, to make a statement on the that agenda item they wanted actually to speak uh, do we have the connection uh, we do so then uh, without any further ado i would uh, uh, I would request the distinguished representative of Iran to make a statement taking into account the time limits for statements, two minutes. And uh, I invite the representative of Iran uh, to speak. Before doing so, I also see actually the request for the floor from the delegation of Timor-Leste and my question would be very simple and clear. If it is actually the opposition to my decision to give the floor to the delegation on Iran under the agenda item five to speak on some issues on those, uh, under those agenda items that they wanted to speak, so then definitely I will give the floor to the de delegate of the Timor Leste. So what I would like to hear from the delegate of Timor Leste if it is actually a procedural opposition to the idea of giving the floor to the delegate of Iran. May I kindly request the Secretariat uh, to get the delegation of Timor Leste connected? Uh, Timor Leste, the yes, floor is yours. I just want to speak under the agenda item five. Okay, in that case, with your indulgence, we will wait until we proceed with the agenda item five per se. And meanwhile, with your indulgence, I will give the floor to the delegate from Iran. Thank you so much for your Thank understanding. You. Thank you. Uh, distinguished colleague and representative from the delegation of Iran, the floor is yours. Dear colleagues, we are still experiencing difficulties in getting the connection for the delegation of it. I see it is kind of a persistent attempt right now. Let's make it as a final trial. Delegation of Iran, can you get through? They keep disconnecting on their end. So okay. Uh, let, let us proceed actually with the agenda item five was your understanding that if and when the delegation of Iran arise to a final, uh, to a successful connection, so then we will let, we will uh, give the floor to the delegation of Iran. Meanwhile, I invite you to continue the consideration of the agenda item five, other matters. And I know that under this agenda item, we have a uh, request for the floor uh, from uh, the UK COP26 Regional Ambassador for Asia and Pacific and South uh, Asia to provide an update on the COP26, which is actually a conference of the parties of the UNFCCC 
uh, supposed to take place in Glasgow. Uh, Mr. Ken of Flaherty, I'm sorry uh, if I uh, mis uh, mispronounce your name. The floor is yours. Thank you. Congratulations to all delegates for a very stimulating discussion yesterday, I understand. Um, my name is Ken O'Flaherty, and I am the COP26 Regional Ambassador um, for the Asia-Pacific region. Um, I, my appointment has been made in order to increase our uh, engagement with governments across the Asia-Pacific region and South Asia to ensure that we are reflecting your perspectives um, in our preparations for the Leader Summit in November next year. Um, this is a top priority um, for the UK government. Um, it's clear um, that the world uh, needs to redouble its efforts um, to achieve the targets set out in the Paris Agreement, and we are determined to be working with all of your countries um, to help us to deliver that. Um, next slide, please. Uh, so this slide sets out our overall aims. Um, it's clear um, that uh, we must set the world on a path to a zero carbon economy um, as we build back um, from the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the consequences for the world if we do not um, uh, move on to a clearer path towards a zero carbon economy will be dire. And we are not currently on track um, to reach two degrees Celsius or 1.5 uh, degrees Celsius overall global warming. And if we fail um, in our endeavors um, to lower overall emissions uh, and keep um, climate change down, um, then um, that will have serious consequences for economies, populations, um, uh, and uh, the entire world. Um, our aim is that at Glasgow, um, we make that shift and we make clear that that shift is irreversible. Um, and we're also very aware of the importance of ensuring that as governments around the world take action to lower emissions and tackle climate change, we also must ensure that the path is fair and inclusive and that we're building resilience uh, among countries around the world um, to deal with the consequences of climate change. Next slide, please. Um, so this slide um, sets out our vision for the Climate Ambition Summit, um, which our Prime Minister will be hosting um, uh, in, on Saturday, um, so the 12th of December, in partnership with Chile, um, Italy, France and our UN partners. Um, the summit is designed to maintain momentum in the run-up um, to COP26 next year. Um, only those countries which have set out um, new ambitious action on climate change will be invited to speak at the summit, and we very much hope that it will mark a further step change um, in the global um, fight against climate change. Commitments will be covering um, all of the three pillars of the Paris Agreement, um, so we hope there will be announcements around um, mitigation and action to tackle emissions, including net zero statements. Um, we also um, hope there will be announcements around adaptation. Uh, and, and declarations by countries which are working to minimize the impact of climate change um, on their populations today, and of course on climate finance, um, which remains an important um, target uh, as set out in the Paris Agreement. Um, there will be statements by leaders, but we're also keen to ensure participation by business, non-state actors, and civil society, as is of course um, part of our overall approach on COP26 um, overall. And we very much hope this will um, put, mark a shift in momentum and will restore global focus on the importance of tackling climate change um, despite the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. Um, next slide, please. So this slide sets out the challenge facing us, which is considerable. I've already mentioned um, the COVID-19 pandemic, which has, of course, um, been dominating the minds of policymakers and governments worldwide. Um, but there is also, of course, the challenge of the ambition. Um, we are not on track um, to meet our past commitments. And indeed, um, the graph on the right hand side um, sets out the current situation. On current policies, um, the world is heading for around four degrees Celsius um, warming um, if current policies are maintained. The grey line uh, marks where current NDCs would take us, and as you'll see, that is way above um, the level of emissions required um, to limit uh, warming to 2 degrees Celsius or 1.5 degrees Celsius. So a key aim 
for us as presidency of COP26 will be to bring the line down um, much closer um, to the blue lines you see on that graph. Um, we also are determined to ensure that um, countries and donors meet the Paris targets on finance. So $100 billion every year um, in the international system for um, international climate finance. Um, we are not, we think, currently on track for that, although there has been some progress. The UK is trying to lead by example, and we have doubled um, our own climate finance to £11.6 billion, pounds, uh, and we're encouraging other donors um, to follow our lead. Um, the UK is also trying um, to make sure that countries um, spend equally on mitigation and adaptation because we are clear that countries are facing the impact of climate change today uh, and need the, their support on that. And that builds into our broader work around adaptation and resilience, which will be a very important focus of our work. And of course, we need to uh, achieve progress on the negotiations, um, which are still outstanding, um, notably around the Paris rulebook. And we very much hope that there will be um, pragmatism and constructive approach from all our partners in order to allow us to reach uh, agreement on those important issues. And finally, um, we are aware that the public is expecting progress. Um, uh, around the world, we are seeing um, strong uh, demonstrations of public support for urgent action on climate change and calls on governments and to move quicker to lower emissions and tackle the impacts. Um, next slide, please. So this slide um, sets out our overall approach as a presidency towards COP26. You'll see that at the very top, we have the Paris goals, which I've covered already. Um, those are supported by national action uh, through their nationally determined contributions and long-term strategies. And we expect several new um, nationally determined contributions to be announced at the event on Saturday. And indeed, we very much welcome um, several announcements in, in recent days um, from partner countries, including in the Pacific region. Um, we will also, of course, um, be ensuring that is uh, strengthened by action on negotiations and the outstanding issues. And you'll see that we have five <clears throat> key campaigns as part of our presidency. Um, those are campaigns around adaptation and resilience, around the energy transition, around finance, around nature. Um, so ensuring that um, partners uh, and countries around the world develop nature-based solutions, such as on forests and mangroves, and also on transport. So accelerating the transition um, towards zero emission vehicles, um, which the UK is again uh, trying to lead by example um, by announcing um, just last week um, that we will phase out all petrol and diesel cars um, by 2030. We very much encourage partners uh, across the, this region um, to follow that lead. Um, next slide, please. Next slide. Lovely. Um, so we very much support <coughs> the strong message from the UN Secretary General um, that countries around the world um, should take um, the, this opportunity to deliver a clean, green and resilient recovery um, after the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Um, this is a once-in-a-generation opportunity. Um, it's clear that governments around the world are now developing economic stimulus packages um, to help their economies emerge from the COVID-19 um, pandemic. Um, that is a crucial opportunity to be spending that stimulus, those stimulus packages on green tech and on renewable energy. Um, they, this is probably the, the only time in the next 10 or 20 years and um, that governments will be spending so much money um, to relaunch their economies and we must take this opportunity um, to ensure that is compatible um, with our international Paris goals. Um, we are helped um, by the fact that the economic case for investment in renewable energy is crystal clear. Um, it, renewable energy such as solar and wind is already cheaper than coal in over two thirds of countries worldwide. Investment in renewable energy generates four times more jobs than investment in the fossil fuel sector and also brings significant economic benefits in terms of lower health and lower environmental costs, um, given the effect of pollution um, on uh, countries worldwide. Um, it's also uh, significant that investing in renewable energy and green tech will mean that countries around the world will be investing in sectors which will be growth sectors um, for decades to come. 
um, those that do not take this opportunity will strongly risk losing competitive advantage. Next slide. And this slide um, just gives a bit more illustration of what I've just been saying about the cost competitiveness um, of renewable energy. You'll see the map on the right hand side um, shows that the, the most economic um, form of energy for several countries worldwide. And as I say, in the vast majority of countries worldwide, that is now renewable energy. Um, in the UK, um, we have um, announced plans for 40 gigawatts of new offshore wind, um, which will be enough to power every household in the UK um, by 2030. And we encourage countries across this region um, to show similar ambition in their own expansion of renewable energy. Uh, and we also, in particular, um, are focusing on the need to um, end um, coal projects across the world. Um, if, if the world proceeds with its existing pipeline of coal projects, it is very clear we will not be able to meet our Paris goals. And given that those projects are increasingly uneconomic and will be creating stranded assets for the future, um, we are encouraging our partners to reconsider. And we are also offering support including through the creation of the Energy Transition Council, which is bringing together donors uh, and recipient countries um, where they need help in managing the steps towards the energy transition. Next slide, please. And here we just have a few examples of progress in recent months. We very much welcomed the announcement by China um, at the UN General Assembly that it will be uh, setting a net zero emissions target for 2060. Um, that was followed by very welcome announcements by Japan and South Korea. Um, we're also seeing significant movement on the energy transition, including in the Asia-Pacific region. Um, we particularly welcome um, the coal moratorium um, announced by the Philippines, uh, and Vietnam and many other countries are dramatically expanding their use of renewable energy. Um, working with business is also an important part of our approach as presidency, uh, and without going into the, uh, reading out the slides, um, there have been several uh, major announcements by international businesses, which we're clear does very much support the global transition um, towards renewable energy uh, and net zero. Next slide, please. <coughs> And so just to conclude on the energy transition, um, we see several possibilities for um, countries across um, the Asia Pacific region. Uh, we encourage um, partners to set their own net zero announcements following um, those announced by China, Japan and South Korea. Um, as I mentioned, we encourage a rapid phase out of fossil fuels, including um, new moratoria on the use of coal. We very much hope that the nationally determined contributions, which countries worldwide are now developing, will set enhanced emissions reductions targets for 2030. And of course, countries are also developing their long-term strategies, which we hope will set up pathways um, to net zero. And the UK presidency um, will um, consistently um, offer our uh, support uh, for all your efforts um, in that direction. Next slide, please. Um, so here are some details on how to find out more, and I would just like to conclude um, by thanking um, all countries represented here today um, for um, their help, cooperation and their climate action. Um, the challenge, as I have set out, is, is significant, um, but I am convinced that by working together, um, governments, businesses and civil society around the world um, can deliver um, strong climate action to bring us on track to meet our international Paris goals. Thank you very much. Uh, I thank you very much, the uh, Ambassador, uh, for COP26 on uh, for Asia Pacific and South Asia on the uh, uh, COP26. Uh, uh, I highly appreciate your comments and uh, your presentation was indeed quite telling and uh, very um, illustrative, I would say. I have only to say that building upon uh, upon my experience as a former uh, climate change negotiator, I would love to share with you a couple and uh, other colleagues uh, just a couple of thoughts on that exactly issue. And I thank you again for your presentation. 
And it is indeed just a couple of thoughts. And, but of course, I do not uh, want to go too much at length uh, on this. What I really, really appreciate actually uh, in the aspirations uh, of the presidency, and it is indeed a very important role uh, for the presidency to lead the process. And of course, uh, key aims uh, for the presidency is uh, to uh, arrive to a uh, con con uh, successful co uh, conclusions uh, at the end of the meeting, and uh, I'm I'm absolutely with you on uh, those words, uh, key words uh, that you underscored as a pragmatism and uh, constructive approach. That is indeed uh, something in great demand on the UNFCCC field. Uh, I'm also noticed actually your focus and uh, accent on the so-called zero carbon economy. That's where I would like to say that uh, we, must, we must avoid any haze around the uh, uh, Paris Agreement and uh, what we have in Paris Agreement in Article 4.1, it's actually the notion of balance between emissions and uh, the um, uh, removals by sink, which is uh, scientifically correct. And uh, that was the deal done under the, uh, under the Paris Agreement. But I, uh, I say again, I do understand the aspirations and I wish you all success uh, in a final, uh, in, a, in a successful navigation through the preparatory process for COP26 and COP26 six per se, hopefully, which might, might be convened under the normal format, if possible. Uh, with that, I thank you very much. And uh, as promised, uh, we still have uh, the, uh, we still see an attempt from the delegation of Iran to get connected. And if I may suggest that Secretariat uh, could work Iran delegation through CUDA for inter interventions. And I please, I offer the floor to the representative of uh, the Secretariat, Ms. Diana. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, if you don't mind, um, can we give the floor to Iran? That was exactly what I uh, also wanted to achieve desperately. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, madam. Now I give the floor back to the chair. My voice is OK? Uh, if I may interrupt you for a second, uh, don't waste time and just let the floor to the delegation of Iran until they have connection. Thank you. Okay. Uh, if my voice is uh, fine for you, I start. On. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, for giving this opportunity. And I'm really sorry for uh, disturbing uh, all of the delegates uh, for the technical problems. Distinguished delegates, first of all, I would like to apologize uh, for unable to join you via code yesterday because of the technical problems. But uh, I, I followed the, the meeting by, through the YouTube. It is an undeniable fact that the virtual meetings uh, have some advantage and disadvantage that it should be considered. In the context of the establishing sustainable smart cities, I would like to inform the committee uh, that the city of Tehran, by joining the United uh, for Smart Sustainable Cities, has made a wide effort uh, to sustainability of this populated city and improve its uh, air quality. Uh, this is a global platform for exchanging achievements, sharing knowledge, and and uh, creating the infrastructure for determining and me uh, measuring uh, key perform performance indicators in the path of smartening the world cities. In this regard, and for improving the air quality of uh, metropolises, uh, the government has facilitated the achievement of sustainable development goals in the urban areas by creating uh, electronic platform accessible uh, for, for citizens. 
defining a smart goals and long-term perspective, investment by private sectors and supporting knowledge-based companies and startups, determining uh, the necessary projects and me measures, increasing the benefits of urban green space and smartening and providing remote urban services such as uh, car services, supporting online businesses, uh, urban services, uh, uh, providing information and urban statistics related uh, to energy, health and uh, tourism, etc. Upgrading air quality control and noise pollution system, uh, recognizing the nature uh, regarding urban uh, sustainability and increasing public transportation are the main plans uh, and ongoing uh, programs to reduce the urban traffic, help uh, urban sustainability and also increase uh, air quality. I, I really um, try to deliver a very short um, intervention and uh, thank you very much for your patience. Thank you. All right, thank you, delegation of Iran, and uh, we are all cognizant of those limitations we all experience uh, with the uh, uh, hybrid format and it is utmost hope of the uh, entire community here in UNSCAP that as soon as we recover we come back to the normal med uh, normal format for the meetings but you do not need to apologize for something that is well beyond your actually uh, accessibility I thank you, thank you. Uh, I see the request for the floor from the delegation of Timor Leste. And I stress again, we are considering now agenda item five. And it was my understanding what I did use from the brief remark of the delegation of Timor Leste that it is exactly on the agenda item five are the matters. If it is the case, the floor is yours, Madam Elisa. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good afternoon, everyone. As this is my last day to attend the SCAP meeting, I would like to take this opportunity to say thank you to the SCAP Secretariat, uh, especially to Madam Amira and the team for all the support given to Timor Leste. Also, I would like to thank, uh, would like to thank you, Member State, Associate Member States, and Observe State Countries, major groups, and other stakeholders, international organizations for uh, their cooperation collaboration and friendship. I have learned a lot from all of you. In addition, attending the SCAP meeting, it's a, it, it has enhanced my skill, knowledge, and experience. To conclude, I will wish everyone all the best. And please accept my advance Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Lisa. And uh, we all wish you also all success in your future endeavors and thank you very much for your contribution to the activities of the UNSCAP and of course we do share your sentiment about the uh, nice and pleasant Christmas time. Thank you. Uh, I also have on my screen the request for the floor from the uh, representative of the APRN and uh, before giving the floor to the representative of the APRN, I would like to underscore again that we are considering the agenda item five. And if the substantive part of the comment uh, the representative of the IPRI is going to present is about the uh, other matters, so then the floor is yours. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much again, Mr. Chair, for giving me the opportunity to speak for the last time. And um, this is regarding two points, one in relation to other matters and two in relation to the Agenda 5. If the Chair would allow me to speak on those items, is that okay, Mr. Chair? Uh, frankly, uh, I do not see any difference uh, between other matters and Agenda 5, because Agenda Item 5, it is other matters. Thank you. Thank you. 
First of all, um, I think uh, I've been listening to all the presentations since yesterday, and I've noticed that uh, a lot of things are missing in the discussion. And this is the, the, the points that are supposedly being raised by civil society. And when I say civil society, this is the broad civil society who are uh, working for the environment on the ground in different countries all over the world. And that is the issue of the um, structural barriers. <laughs> and that, that is the reason why we are sort of uh, kind of getting frustrated with, with these meetings because it's so difficult to engage with only two minutes to, to, to say your piece. And so uh, we, really, we really would like to have more time to speak with all of you in relation to our different concerns. Se concerns about security, concerns about peace, all these issues, concerns about human rights. This is the, the International Day of Human Rights and, and a lot of countries are, are, are protesting because uh, people are so fed up with this system. And so we really appeal to our delegates in this uh, assembly to please listen to your people. In the countries, like in the Philippines right now, five uh, environmental defenders have, have again been uh, subjected to harassment and, uh, and was arrested early this morning. Uh, and that is something that is very, very disappointing for us. And even at the UN, we are so disappointed that some countries are against the UNEP's uh, agenda towards the environmental defenders. So I hope that you will listen to your people because that is what you are supposed to be doing as members of the United Nations in, the, in, in, in different countries. Um, try to make, uh, we appeal for more inclusive and meaningful participation of different stakeholders uh, in, 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 in development policy making. And I hope, I sincerely appeal to everyone to please include us in, in your discussions with regards to the draft report, for instance. I haven't seen some of our statements being included in the draft uh, report. And uh, we don't know whether our, our appeal that we should be part of the technical uh, working uh, technical team will be, will be addressed. And, um, and of course, in leading up to the different conferences happening in relation to COP and into the UNEA, a lot of the discussions are lost from the national, regional, and international level. And, 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 and it's so difficult for us to engage when you don't know what, what are the things being discussed. And I'm happy to see that it, the sub-regions are doing you know, uh, different things. And, and I've, I've heard some of them today, but you know, how can we hold our governments accountable if we don't know what they're doing? So please, so uh, this is my last appeal to everybody and thank you so much. Uh, I hope that uh, we will all uh, reflect on this, the 75 years of International Human Rights Day and, 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 and the challenge for all of us is really how to, to work together for a better world for all of us. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. I thank you, Madam Eliza, and I have to say, uh, uh, to say that uh, I hope that it is not your last appeal. Uh, it's uh, only one of your appeals, and definitely uh, many things that you addressed, I think that they are well taken note of by both uh, delegates, uh, delegates present and uh, the secretariat and we all share frustration about the format and time limits and definitely uh, we all hope that we will have a better times uh, for uh, discussions as appropriate and uh, i have to underscore that uh, the whole organization of uh, the meetings under the UNSCAP they are organized in a way to allow meaningful participation of the major stakeholders and uh, the achievement of uh, both 
uh, SDGs and all other noble aspirations that could uh, be uh, only the common endeavor of all the societies uh, and the strategies of the societies around the world. Though, of course, we have to be cognizant of the simple fact that we work under the specific uh, agenda setting and uh, under the Committee of Environment, uh, we are considering the issues uh, which are directly uh, pertinent to the environment and sustainable development, uh, while uh, those bigger issues like security, peace, human rights, uh, they uh, belong to uh, other entities of the United Nations. And we uh, clearly understand that the prerogatives of the Committee of the Environment. Otherwise, I thank you very much for your comments. And uh, with this, I see no more registrations uh, for uh, the agenda item five to speak. And uh, then without any further ado, I would like to, inv uh, to invite colleagues uh, to proceed to the consideration of the agenda item five, adoption of the report of the committee of its sixth session. And uh, item item six, agenda item six. Uh, we will now consider the report of the committee as contained uh, in document SCAP slash CED slash 2020 slash L2, which consists of two parts. First, the recommendations and decisions of the committee require action or brought to the attention of the commission. And second, the organizational and uh, procedural aspects of the committee. Informal consultations were held uh, on November 10, 2020, and the draft recommendation and decisions were circulated for comments uh, prior to the session, which is very important especially taking into account the uh, circumstance we are operating under. So uh, those recommendations and decisions were draft recommendations and decisions were circulated by the Secretariat prior to the session on December 1, 2020. Uh, on my personal level, I would like to thank the Secretariat for timely circulation of all those uh, uh, drafts. Uh, those were circulated with the series of comments received by a delegation and addressed accordingly. A chair summary capturing the deliberation of the committee will be, as usual, shared with the participant with the participants within one calendar week from today and uh, open for factual comments for another week as uh, was noted many times, and I would like to underscore it now again. It is not a negotiated document, and it should not be to be. Uh, it should not be a negotiated document. It was not intended to be a negotiated document, so it will be open only for comments related to factual corrections. Uh, I will now open the floor for comments or formal proposals, if any, on part one, uh, matters calling for action by the Commission or brought to its attention, which are contained in section A of the report and uh, which contains recommendation one. Uh, are there any comments? Uh, I have to say that uh, it is indeed uh, a very important stage of our deliberations right now. And uh, if there is any proposal intended to be made, so then it has to be formally proposed by the delegations wishing to do so now. So we are now considering uh, section A of the report, which contains recommendation one. Are there any comments? I see none. So then we have. Uh, uh, so uh, let me let's move to section B of part one, 
which contains decision one. And uh, I stress again, we are now going through the formal process of considering the uh, drafts. And if there is any formal proposal from any delegation, this proposal has to be formally introduced now by those delegation who may wish to introduce any formal amendment to the decision one. In case we do not hear any proposal, then we will proceed uh, to the next part of the draft report with the understanding that the decision one did not receive uh, any comments or anything else, which looks like not the case. And I see the uh, registration arrived from the delegation of Thailand. Uh, may I kindly invite the delegate from Thailand to take the floor and clearly indicate what is actually uh, their proposal about. The floor is yours. Uh, regarding the technical ex expert group on uh, environment, uh, um, is to be able to work with the most effective and efficient uh, manner with a clear guide, guidance for their work. Uh, Thailand would like to propose an mm -hmm. amendment to paragraph three of the draft as uh, of the draft report as follow. The committee requests the secretariat, uh, Roman one, to prepare the term of reference of the technical expert group on environment and development and submit to member state for consideration. And uh, Roman two, to seek nomination of experts from member state prior to the first meeting of the group. I thank you. I thank distinguished delegate from uh, Thailand, uh, with your indulgence, if I can kindly request you to slowly repeat the text so that the secretariat could capture the wording. All right. Um, may I repeat? Uh, the, the committee requests the secretariat, uh, Roman want to prepare term of reference term of reference of of the technical of the technical expert group on environment and development and submit to member states member states for consideration and Roman two to seek nominations of experts of experts from member states prior to the first meeting of the group
I thank you. I thank you, Delegate of Thailand, and I thank uh, Secretariat for capturing the uh, proposal made by the delegation of Thailand, which is self-explanatory. Uh, I would like to request delegations uh, that might be wishing to take the floor to comment on the uh, proposal made by delegation of uh, Thailand. I see uh, the flag of my own delegation, the representative of the Russian Federation, and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. Uh, the delegation of the Russian Federation would like to propose an alternative wording. So, uh, the committee requests the Secretariat. May I ask the Secretariat to show it on the screen? This committee requests the Secretariat to organize preparation is appropriate of terms of reference of the okay. technical okay. expert group. Once again, the committee requests the secretariat to organize yes. preparation is appropriate of terms of reference of the technical expert group on environment and development and submit to member states for consideration and I should be a Rom Roman too here, yeah. To seek nominations of experts from member states, comma, prior to the first meeting of the group. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, delegation of uh, my own delegation. Thank you, the representative of uh, the Russian Federation. Uh, with your indulgence, I, I would like only to double check it for the clarity of uh, uh, understanding as far as uh, I read and of course I'm well versed about uh, uh, the proposal. So the proposal of uh, uh, the delegation of the Russian Federation as uh, um, aired by uh, my dear colleague is uh, that uh, the alternate language reads the committee requests the secretariat Roman I to organize preparations as appropriate of terms of reference of the technical expert group on environment and development and submit to member states for consideration and uh, to Romanize to seek nomination of experts from member states prior to the first meeting of the group. Which means that uh, the substantive, uh, uh, the substantive uh, amendment refers uh, to the uh, first Roman I where we delete to prepare and swap it by organized preparation as appropriate of terms of reference. So those are so far two proposals made by two delegation. And uh, I would like to check if there is any other delegation wishing to, uh, we, uh, wishing to speak and I see the delegation of China requesting uh, for the floor. The delegation of China, you have the floor. Little things uh, before uh, in the Austria, before the 
para to the first meeting is three weeks from member states three weeks uh i'm sorry i'm sorry delegation of china there was a loss of sound in connection could you kindly repeat your either comment or proposal specifically indicating on which uh, uh paragraph and which proposal you are uh, suggesting your for which paragraph or proposal you are suggesting your comments or amendments thank you sure no problem can you hear me right now chair if you could speak up a little bit okay okay so actually i want to insert into the have a little opinion on the paragraph four is the all three paragraph four is uh, adding between from member states and the para to the first meeting I want to insert three weeks because we need a uh, we need a timeline. Uh, we need some time prepare for the uh, technical expert, and also we need to uh, uh, review about the uh, terms of reference. Thank you. I thank you, delegation of China. I hope uh, your comment is well taken off which i understand please correct me if i'm wrong that might apply to both which is paragraph four and paragraph five so yes, correct correct okay so then i will request the secretariat to introduce the amendment made by the delegation of china into both text we have now I thank you, delegation of China, and I also see the re uh, the request for the floor from the delegation of Iran, and uh, I give the floor to the delegation of Iran. I would like to support my colleagues from uh, other countries countries and uh, I would like to support the suggestion from the China about the time uh, for the review of the TOR and uh, also I think the um, um, recommendation from the China uh, from the Thailand is better than the big because uh, um, because uh, that uh, it is uh, to refer the, about the prepared TOR uh, before the uh, establishing the technical expert and then ask the uh, countries to uh, nominate uh, for this uh, expert group. Thank you very much. I thank you, delegation of Iran. And uh, I would like to make it absolutely clear and to double check it with you correct me if I'm wrong, that you are supporting the notion that the nominations of experts from the member states, they have to be sought three weeks prior to the first meeting of the group. And then I believe you your comment was referred to that, which is, I understand, also applicable to the uh, alternate language as proposed uh, by the delegation of the Russian Federation, and uh, which is uh, reflected now under paragraph five. So then, I would request, if it is indeed the case, so then I request the Secretariat to reflect it in both paragraphs four and five. So I see that was the case. And uh, now I see another request from the floor from the uh, Chinese permanent mission and the floor is open for the delegation of China. Thank you. Uh, delegation of China, unfortunately, we cannot hear you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, sorry to ask the floor again. 
uh, because some technical problem, I just uh, log in like 10 minutes ago. Maybe some delegation has already asked the same question. I just want to ask, uh, 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 invite the secretariat to make a little explanation about how they can find the resource uh, to organize the technical expert group. If they already do it, uh, do it. Maybe just want them to uh, uh, say it again. Thank you. I thank you, delegation of China. As I understood your question about the uh, availability or maybe unavailability of the resources uh, to uh, implement uh, the task that might be vested into the technical expert group. And uh, then I thank you for this question and I will address it to the representative of the secretariat. If uh, the representative uh, from the secretariat can respond to the query of the Chinese delegation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, mm -hmm. And thank you uh, to the Chinese delegation for the question. Um, the sub program on environment and development, both for uh, the year 2021 and for the year 2022, as it has been formed, it includes provision for the organization of expert group meetings. Mm -hmm. So within the existing provisions, if now the member states decide to establish this group within the existing provisions and within the existing resources, without uh, needing additional resources, we can organize uh, the meetings of the uh, expert uh, of the technical expert group. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I thank you, Secretary. Thank you, Stephanos, and uh, I hope that it would suffice and uh, the uh, I hope uh, that it will be a clear response to the uh, question asked by the Chinese delegation. If it is the case, so then let us proceed further with the consideration of those two uh, texts we have now. Uh, and uh, I would like to say that it looks to me like almost identical text so far. And uh, the only substantive, substantive thing is contained uh, in a small Roman eye where the delegation of Thailand proposed uh, that the secretariat prepare terms of reference of the technical expert group. And uh, the uh, ultimate uh, wording suggested by the delegation of the Russian Federation, it's, uh, uh, it is suggested that uh, the Secretariat organize operations as appropriate of terms of reference of the technical expert group. So unless I see any other request for the floor from any other delegation so far, I would like then address my question as a chair to the representative of Thailand. If the uh, amendment suggested by the delegation of the Russian Federation is palatable, acceptable for the delegation uh, of Thailand. Please, delegation of Thailand, the floor is yours. Delegation of Thailand, can you hear me? I kindly request the delegation of Thailand to respond to the question of the chair. I see the registration and uh, I thank you delegation of Thailand. I repeat the question of the chair. Uh, which is quite simple. If uh, the uh, amendment proposed by the delegation of the Russian Federation is acceptable to the delegation of Thailand, the floor is yours.
delegation of Thailand. We see your registration on the uh, request list, but we cannot neither hear you nor to see you. Okay. Sir? Yes, yeah. hear you. Yeah, yeah. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. okay. Um, as a compromise, uh, we propose to combine the two proposals uh, as follows. To prepare as appropriate term of reference. I mean, at the uh, Roman one. Is this possible to uh, combine? To prepare as appropriate term of reference. And I in insist that uh, um, when we have a, a TOR, we better submit to a member state for uh, sub uh, for consideration or even uh, for adoption uh, prior to uh, having the expert group. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, delegation of Thailand. And at this point of time, taking into account the development of the discussions uh, and uh, taking into account that I see no any other delegation requesting for the floor. So then I have to say that we need, uh, uh, it seems to me as actually uh, the representative, uh, if I can put on back my hat as a representative of the delegation of the Russian Federation, we need uh, further consultations and deliberations on that issue. But before doing so, I definitely need to consult with the representative of the Secretariat if they liberate me from the uh, prerogatives of the chair, and then I will take uh, my seat as the representative of the Russian Federation, if it is possible, if uh, the Secretariat have a standby options uh, to find uh, uh, the vice chair to continue the meeting. So then if it is not the case, uh, I will need uh, your clear indulgence and understanding that I might uh, request for the floor in my capacity as the representative of the delegation of the Russian Federation, but I definitely would like to avoid any misunderstanding and any conflict of interests. Uh, it is the only aspiration of mine is actually to facilitate uh, the successful conclusion of the meeting. So may I kindly request the Secretariat, what are the options for the continuation of this discussion? Thank you, Mr. Chair. We do not have uh, one of the vice chairs or the chair in the room. So um, it is um, our understanding uh, that uh, at any moment the, the chair could take, you could take off your hat as the chair and talk are you as the representative of your country if this is not objected by any other country. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I have actually to thank the Secretariat for their understanding, but I also have to make it absolutely clear that it has to be the decision actually of the delegations. If it is acceptable, taking into account the prevailing circumstances, it is fine. I can actually, um, I can continue fulfilling my duties as a chair uh, with a clear understanding that uh, the possibility for the chair to take at certain point of time, to resume at certain point of time, uh, its duties as the representative of the national delegation, that is okay. But I would like to have a clear understanding from the delegation that it is acceptable for the delegations. So my question is now addressed to the delegates. Would it be okay for the uh, delegations that we continue the deliberations uh, of this session and uh, with the uh, uh, with the uh, uh, the chair fulfilling its duties and 
Meanwhile, at certain points, uh, relinquishing implementation of its duties, uh, fulfilling its duty as a, as a chair and taking the floor as the representative of the national delegation. So this question goes to the delegations. Uh, if uh, it is acceptable, so then we continue the consideration of uh, this, uh, 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 of this session under this setting. goes once, goes twice, goes three. So I see no any formal objection that taken into account the prevailing circumstances we are operating under that we continue in a kind of a weird format that chair fulfilling its duties but is allowed by delegates to take the floor from time to time in its capacity of the representative of its national delegation. I thank you, colleagues. We, are, we will proceed at that. And uh, I see the request for the floor from the delegation of Thailand. The floor is yours. Chair, uh, I think that uh, to move in, in, in order to move uh, forward, then uh, both proposals seem to share the same uh, in uh, Roman 2. Uh, we would like to uh, request the secretary to clear uh, just for the first part. Uh, for, my, um, um, for my stand, I think that um, um, for the Russian proposal, um, if you uh, I can uh, deliberate just uh, some uh, proposal that uh, to organize the preparation meeting is for the, the clear that uh, the meeting has been have to uh, convene uh, as appropriate. And also that uh, chair for the second um, uh, sentence that uh, I, I just uh, proposed that the submit to member state for consideration is the must for us. Uh, uh, this is my, my, my position. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Thailand. And I thank you very much, actually, for, uh, the, uh, uh, for your comments. And uh, I have to confess that thanks to your comments made, at least now, I see the discrepancy uh, between what was aired by the delegation of the Russian Federation and uh, actually what is reflected in the text. Uh, the proposal made by the delegation of the Russian Federation, and uh, I will request the delegate uh, of the Russian Federation to correct me if I'm wrong. So the proposal made by the Russian Federation uh, uh, reads as follows. The committee requests the secretariat to organize preparations as appropriate in terms of reference of the technical expert group on environment and development and definitely submit it and submit to member states for consideration. In uh, para five, I would request the secretariat to reflect it uh, because it is indeed an important part of this uh, formula. I repeat again, yeah, and I see it now on the text. So it reads, uh, the committee requests the secretary to organize preparation as appropriate of terms of reference of the technical expert group on environment and development and submit to member states for consideration. So both texts are now all are clear enough. And uh, it would be my proposal now at this stage, before I give the floor to the delegation of China, which I see on the request list, before doing so, I, as a chair, in my capacity as a chair, I would suggest that at least we clean the, uh, uh, second part of the text, we clean up the second part of the text 
which comes after two small Roman eyes, which are identical in uh, both texts. If uh, there are no objections from the delegation, so then I suggest that in my capacity as a chair that we clean up the text which appears after Roman 2i and which reads, to, to seek nominations of experts from member states, to seek nominations from member states three weeks prior to the first meeting of the group. I think, Secretariat, due to technical reasons, they simply cannot physically do this uh, on the screen. But then my proposal would be to arrive to a common understanding that we have a position which is identical and uh, which is accepted by all delegations on the text which comes after small Roman eyes, two Roman eyes. If it is, if it is uh, the case, so then we all understand that the, uh, the text after the two small Roman eyes is uh, now uh, clear. And uh, we have to focus uh, on the first part of this uh, uh, formula. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I saw the uh, uh, registration from the delegation of China wishing to speak. The floor is yours. Thank you. As long as we are experiencing difficulties in connecting the delegation of China with your indulgence. Yeah, yeah. yeah Chair. So, sorry. Yeah, there's a technical problem. Can you hear me right now? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. I, you. I, have, I have a question uh, to the to the distinguished delegation of Thailand. Uh, I think they mentioned to organize a preparation meeting uh, to talk about the term of reference. I just want to uh, know that uh, the first is this paper meeting should be attended by our ACPR members or other uh, members uh, to talk uh, to talk about the term of reference and also who should be in this uh, technical uh, expert group. Uh, is, is that right? Or, or we only talk about the term of reference? Uh, that's my question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, delegation of China. And uh... Am I right in my understanding that your question was addressed to the delegation of Thailand? Yes, that's right, because they mentioned uh, to organize a preparation meeting. Yeah. Okay, uh, okay, so then I will request the delegation of Thailand to give a brief, uh, to give a response to the question uh, of the delegation of China. Uh, thank you for uh, your question, China. Uh, actually, the, the preparation is, uh, I mean, at the document, uh, con uh, at the document of the SCAP slash CED slash 2020 slash uh, 3, it's already uh, drafted the, the, the information that uh, uh, can develop into the TOR um, because uh, I need that uh, it, the TOI should include uh, uh, many information such as the, the mandate, membership, uh, frequency, and uh, mode of meeting and time frame of the, the working group, and so on. Therefore, uh, I think that um, uh, we can uh, ask the secretariat that uh, uh, organize the, the, the preparation meeting for a discuss of the TOR. TOR. Is this uh, uh, your, your answer, Chinese? 
I thank you, delegation of Thailand. And uh, I also would like at this point of time to request the indulgence of the delegations that I take off for a while my head of the chair and if I may speak in my capacity as the representative of the national delegation has decided. Uh, dear colleagues, I will be speaking now in my capacity as a representative of the national delegation of the Russian Federation and I would like to invite your attention to the uh, substantive part and the substantive notion which is contained uh, in uh, the proposal of the Russian delegation. Uh, and I also borrowing and I also picking upon uh, the latest uh, uh, comments made uh, by the delegation of Thailand while responding the query of the delegation of China that the delegation of Thailand uh, expects that the secretariat organize preparation of terms of reference of the technical expert group. So what I wanted actually to underscore that we are of a strong opinion that the elaboration of the uh, terms of reference of the technical expert group, this is the subject matter which belongs to the uh, national delegations, member states. We do not see any substantive role of the secretariat to draft any texts and proposals with the only exception of the uh, informal expert contributions to the, for the discussions. And this is a substantive actually uh, difference in those two proposals as contained under the first Roman I, where the Thailand's proposal reads that secretariat, as a matter of fact, prepares terms of reference while we, the Russian Federation, we do not envisage any substantive role of the Secretariat in elaboration of the document, which is supposed to be elaborated by member states. And that's why our form, uh, our wording reads that the committee requests the Secretariat to organize preparation as appropriate of terms of reference which means that organization of preparation of terms of meetings, of terms of reference, would involve actually providing technical so, uh, services and facilities to convene the meeting. So I would like to make it absolutely clear, I stress it again, that we do not see any substantive role for the Secretariat to decide on issues that belong to member states. With that in mind, I, uh, my capacity as the representative of the Russian delegation, I would like to uh, double check it with the delegation of Thailand. Uh, could, we, uh, uh, could we hear from you, distinguished delegate from Thailand, that taking into account explanations provided by the delegation of Russian Federation, you can consider acceptance of the uh, text proposed by the delegation of the Russian Federation. Thank you. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you, Cher. Uh, um, I think that uh, we can go along with the Russian proposal that uh, you uh, suggest, uh, Chair. But uh, we have the minor insert of the comma before uh, the word prior to in the Roman two. Chair. Thailand, could you kindly repeat the placement for the comma. Okay, uh, just put the comma uh, after the three weeks. I thank you, delegation of Thailand, and uh, I have to say that maybe I would need a 
clarification from the native speakers. My humble understanding of the language uh, gives me ground to believe that it would uh, defeat the purpose you are trying to achieve. Before three weeks. Can I? My understanding and reading, uh, and I'm speaking now in my capacity as a chair again. Yeah. The understanding of chair was that the proposal of Thailand underscored the need to seek nominations three weeks before, in advance, earlier than the first meeting is convened. But if the comma is put between weeks and prior, it might be construed as a defeating the purpose of what delegation of Thailand wishes to achieve. But being not a native speaker, I would need a clarification from the native speakers on this issue. Thank you. I see the floor. Uh, from the delegation of UK, and I highly appreciate actually your willingness uh, to decide on commas. We we count on your UK uh, wisdom. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, on this matter, we would agree with you as the native speakers represent that it would change the meaning, and uh, we think having it after prior would reflect uh, what the delegation of Thailand are seeking to achieve. Sorry, would you repeat the, the the last part of your comment? Yes, so, so my interpretation is having it after prior. So um, seek nominations of experts from mem member states three weeks prior, comma, to the first meeting of group. I thank you very much. So then I clearly see that uh, the native speaker opinion on the language thing is suppose uh, it goes the same way as uh, the uh, idea of the delegation of Thailand, that the, prior, that the comma has to be moved after the word prior. Would it be okay for the delegation of Thailand to accept this uh, uh, British wisdom on commas? Yes, we do accept. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to say in my capacity of chair that at least we are fine with commas. And I also noticed, uh, if I may speak in my per, uh, capacity of the representative of the national delegation, that the delegate of Thailand accepted actually the uh, idea of uh, taking on board and agreeing on the proposal made by the delegation of the Russian Federation. And I thank you, the delegation of Thailand. Now, resuming my duties as uh, the uh, chair of the meeting, I have to uh, conclude, and I uh, happily conclude, that we now have the text, which is uh, palatable for all the delegations, including teeny tiny commas as well. And I thank you again, those native speakers helping us out. Uh, so the text would read, the committee requests the Secretariat, Roman I, to organize preparation as appropriate of terms of reference of the Technical Expert Group on Environment and Development and submit to member states for consideration to Romanize to seek nominations of experts from member states three weeks prior, comma, to the first meeting of the group. So this is the text which we arrived at, and unless I see any objection from any delegation, I will conclude that we finalize that we finalize the text. So, if there is any objections, if there is any objection, please raise it now. If there is no objection, I count one, I count two, I count three. Ad adopted. Thank you. I uh, think all delegations uh, for their constructive and uh, uh, meaningful engagement in these discussions, even on such things as commas. And I have to confess, as a native speaker of the Russian language, that commas, they have a paramount meaning in Russian language that may 
radically change the text from uh, saving the life to killing someone. So I'm happy that we have a collective wisdom on commas, and I thank you, native speakers. Uh, so we now look at part three, chair summary of the report. Part two, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped organization. Thank you, Secretary. We will now look at part two, organization of the report. Are there any comments? I see none, and uh, I thank you. We have taken no, uh, we have actually uh, uh, gone through the part two. Uh, we will now look at part three, chair's summary of the report. And here we have a placeholder for the chair's summary, which is a normal uh, thing for uh, the activities of the subsidiary bodies of the committee, which is, as explained, will be uh, circulated after the meeting. Uh, with those explanations in mind, are there any comments from any delegation? I see that the request list is blank and I see no request for the floor. So then uh, I conclude the review of the report and uh, I propose that the report is adopted and conveyed to the 77th session of the commission in 2021. So it is my honor, in view of no requests for the floor, it is my honor to announce that the report has been adopted. Uh, now I would like to request Dr. Stephanus Fortieu, the Director of the Environment and Development Division, to provide insightful closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you Mr. very much, Mr. Chair, and I hope I will not disappoint you on the word insightful. I would like to be brief um, and first of all thank all the member states, associate member states, major groups and stakeholders that they have participated in this committee under these circumstances. Um, and I would like also to thank the member states for renewing their commitment on the protection of natural environment and natural resources. And I would like to thank them for the very substantive contributions they had in this committee. The Secretariat is taking all these inputs and these inputs will help us to strengthen our environment and development sub program and to strengthen the support we are providing to the member states in order to achieve the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the SDGs and of course the other big uh, environment related agendas like the Paris Agreement, uh, the post-2020 biodiversity framework, the uh, upcoming ancient uh, decade. We are also thankful to um, the committee for uh, having agreed to establish the technical expert group because we believe that um, this technical expert group could improve the uh, sharing of information between the member states and the Secretariat and it can further guide the Secretariat better on in terms of its, its technical cooperation program, uh, the capacity that provides to the uh, member states and of course its analytical work. Mr. Chair, um, let me also just take a small personal note that um, I am sitting almost five years in uh, this position as Director of the Environment and Development Division. And I want to say to all member states that uh, these, these five years uh, have made me a much better professional because of your direct interventions, because of your guidance, and because of the way that you are negotiating and debating issues in this committee. So I consider uh, a privilege to be working with you. Uh, let me, uh, Mr. Chair, at the end, thank uh, all my colleagues from the Environment and Development Division, uh, the Conference Management Unit, and uh, uh, of course the interpreters uh, that uh, they have done 
they are excellent workers uh, anytime uh, and uh, anyone that uh, I'm forgetting, but all the people that they have worked for this committee. Thank you very much again to the member states and you, Mr. Chair, and the floor is back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanus. Uh, excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, reached almost at the end, if not the end of our program and uh, the uh, time to close of the sixth session of the SCAP Committee on Environment and Development. And before doing so, I would like indeed to thank the Environment and Development Division and Conference Management Union uh, Unit for the effective servicing of the meeting. Indeed effective, taking into account the difficulties we all experience from time to time uh, with connections. And I thank you, Diana, for your contribution to getting us in touch uh, with the Iranian delegation. And I would like also to recognize all those from the Secretariat who worked behind the scene to make this meeting session uh, a uh, very productive one. Uh, I also have to thank the uh, interpreters for being with us, for uh, their contribution to the successful deliberations. Uh, also have to thank, uh, and I'm not kidding at all, uh, I'm really thankful to those native speakers who helped us out with uh, such important issues as I underscored, same important in the Russian language about commas, I am so happy about commas, I thank you very much the UK delegation, Joanna, and uh, we are almost done, the only thing which is imposed on me to tell you that uh, before you leave in the room, uh, you please obey by the uh, uh, requirements of physical distancing and please uh, ensure that you have your valuables and personal belongings with you. So thank you very much, all colleagues. All the best to you. Look forward to meeting you again. And uh, I here declare the meeting closed. Uh, excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we would just draw your attention to the evaluation form uh, and the slide is before you for with both a QR code and a website. Thank you very much and we look forward to your feedback. It was it was the core actually even the core difference in the word made uh, proposed by the delegation of Taiwan and frankly um, after having heard the, the explanations, I understand that they simply omitted something. So the elaboration, uh, actually, I'm speaking from my lawyer's background and actually from the experience with the UN system. Of course, this is something that we, uh, as delegate, we have to decide. We elaborate the draft. And then, as appropriate means, that definitely it has to, so, to be submitted for consideration by the committee, from the committee to the commission, and then commission actually uh, takes the final uh, decision. And, uh, you are they, they may be finalized formally two years yet later, but they may be applied provisionally, suppose we as member states decide. And, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we can uh, and we can take an executive decisions even at the different uh, level, like uh, ACPR. The most important thing that uh, we achieve to a consensus, transparent understanding.